today I'm going to be making dulce de calabaza. It sort of crystallizes using this method. So I'm going to start by using two pie pumpkins that I'm going to peel. I started with a knife and ended up using my peeler, which actually worked really well. Once it's peeled completely, I'm going to cut it right in half. And then I'm going to scrape out all of the seeds and clean up the flesh. Now I'm just going to cut it into large chunks. Here I'm going to create a mixture of five and a half quarts of water and a quarter cup of cal mexicana, which is basically slaked lime. This is what is used to treat the corn to create maiz for tortillas and tamales, you know, the bags of maseca that you buy sometimes in the grocery store. So once I combine this, I'm going to add all of my pumpkin pieces and I am going to let this soak overnight for about 12 hours. You could do this at least for four to six hours mixing every hour because the cal does sort of settle, but I'm going to do this overnight. So I'll probably wake up once or twice in the middle of the night to give it a mix and a stir. Okay, so good morning everyone. It is the next morning, so I'm going to discard that soaking liquid and I'm going to rinse all of my pumpkin pieces well. At this point, you can pierce and poke all of your pumpkin pieces, but I don't do that. But a lot of people do this just to ensure that the sugar really does coat and soak into the pumpkin well. But I kind of skip that step and it still works. So into my pot they go. I'm using an eight quart pot and now I'm going to add five to five and a half quarts of water. And I'm going to pre-boil these. This will ensure that I got rid of all of that cal from the pumpkin pieces because it, the taste will be bitter if you don't do this. I'm going to bring my pot of water up to a boil and once it starts boiling, I'm gonna let it continue boiling for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes of boiling or parboiling the pumpkin pieces, I'm going to discard the water again. I know, this is definitely a process, I will forewarn you. So back into my pot, now I'm going to add clean water. Here I'm adding five to five and a half quarts of water. I think it's closer to five quarts of water. Now I'll be adding four cups of sugar, 16 ounces or a pound of piloncillo. I'm also going to be adding some cinnamon bark, pieces of cinnamon bark to this, and I'll also add some salt. I'm adding the piloncillo, I'm going to add the sugar, and I know this is a lot of sugar, but this is candied pumpkin. Here I'm adding around a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the heat. And before I forget, I am gonna add my cinnamon pieces. And I'm going to bring this up to a boil. And once it comes up to a boil, I'm going to let it cook for two hours at a hard boil. So after two hours of boiling, you'll notice that the liquid has reduced significantly and it's actually almost a syrup. So I'm going to just sort of gently toss my pumpkin pieces and I'm going to lower the heat. And I'm going to continue cooking at a gentle simmer for an additional 45 minutes to an hour. Basically, you are reducing this liquid to a thick syrup. Okay, so it has been an additional 45 minutes at a gentle simmer. So this is definitely reduced to a syrup. So I am going to carefully remove my pumpkin pieces 
and place them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. So I have all of my pumpkin pieces set on my baking sheet and you'll want to let them cool and just set and eventually they will start to crystallize. They actually already are because of the treatment with the cal and the water. It gives the pumpkin candies this chewy rind-like texture but the inside is tender and melt in your mouth. So with the syrup, I just reduced it until it started to get foamy, and I'm going to reserve this. This is perfect to add to pumpkin, to a cheese board. Manchego cheese goes really well with this syrup. My grandmother actually would just eat spoonfuls of this. She really loved it. I might actually save it for her. <laughs> so my pumpkin candy is ready. Once it's cooled and has set for several hours, you can eat it. And the longer that it's exposed to the air, the moisture from the syrupy candied exterior really does crystallize. But this really texturally is so good. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching. <laughs>